Ladies and gentlemen, engines and coaches, I bid you welcome to the grand opening of the new Titmouth Terminus. Thank you, thank you. Now, with this new extension, we'll be able to operate more trains, hopefully providing more services to you. Now, as you can see, for the special occasion, the opening train standing behind me will be something very special. Gordon and Reginald have been very excited to hold this train, which consists of a wreck of some of our brand new coaches. It is to leave very shortly, so I'll stop talking and let them take the show. You know, it really feels like the old days. Indeed it does. All we need is Neil, Clive and Matthew. Yes, that would have been icing on the cake. I wonder where they are right now. I'm sure they're fine wherever they are. I really want to agree with you, Edward. But... Given their age, and their specs for that matter, I'm doubting slightly whether or not they can really fit in anywhere. Well, that might be true. But I'm willing to bet that their experience can benefit someone. Good point. Still, I wonder where they are. Well, it's the last day here. Although, I think I'll keep this place, just in case. Oh, morning Hector. What brings you here? Morning Topham. Nothing more than the new index. Oh, right. Thank you. Wait a minute. Well, I never. I better make a phone call right away. Thank you for bringing that, Stanley. No problem. Now, I know that you just came from there, but I've just heard from Topham that there's another job for you at Kelstorp. Okay... That's kind of odd, considering that I literally just came from Kelstorp. I know, he didn't say much more than that, but I suggest that you just do it. Very well, an order is an order I suppose, I'll get going. Hello there! Um, hello you three. Who are you? Well, I'm Clive, and this is Neil and Matthew. We're your new engines. Hold the phone. Neil, Clive, and Matthew. Would you three be the former Soda and Mainland engines? That's us, yes. I can imagine that the others have told about us. Very much so, indeed. Especially Toby. Ah, Toby. He was the one we really stuck with during our first time here. How is he? Toby is doing very well. He's currently working on Thomas's branch. That's good to hear. Glad he's doing alright. Hopefully we'll be able to meet him and the other engines again. And maybe surprise them. Surprise them? Well, according to Topham, none of the engines know that he purchased us. Well, one does now. Ah, hello Henry. Good to see you again. Indeed. Hello you three. It is a lovely surprise to see you again. Likewise Henry. How are you doing? Well, much better than when we last met. I've been given an overhaul, plus I'm now using a different type of coal, meaning that I've been performing better than ever. That's lovely to hear, Henry. It's good to see that things worked out for you. You definitely deserved it. Thank you. Now, sorry for asking, but now that you're here, what are you going to do? Well, that new branch Topham is constructing at the moment. You know, a section of the former Soda and Mainland track. <laughs> oh, I see now. How very fitting. It is certainly a happy coincidence. Yes, it seems like it. I guess we four will be working on this branch when it's done. 
That's what it seems like. I'm sure that you four will make a grand team. Now I have to go now. Hope to see you some more. We have some things to catch up on. Indeed. See you around, Henry. Well, I hope that there's some work to do, since we've been yearning slightly for it. Well, there's an empty work train that we have to take back to Titmouth. Wait, Titmouth? Where's Titmouth? Oh, that's right. What is? Well, since the last time you were here, we've moved headquarters from Nafford to another town called Titmouth. But it is just a mainland extension. You'll end up there if you continue through Napford. Well, I'll be interested in seeing that. Me too. Then why don't we get going, lads? Very well. Off to Zidmouth! Well, the track feels so much better than I last remember. I agree, but I bet that's not the only thing that's changed. Well, we already learned about one thing. True, so I guess that answers that. And it seems that the speeds have increased massively. Very much so, wow. But that wasn't Gordon. Seems like they've gotten more express engines. I guess that makes sense. Uh, but speaking of which, how do you think Gordon is gonna react when he finds out that we've returned? I dare not think, but I think we all know what the outcome is going to be. Mm-hmm. I bet he's gonna be real pleased with Topham's purchase. Though he's going to be over the moon, I'm sure of it. Hello, Edward. Oh my gosh. Hello, you three. Welcome back to Sodor. Thank you. It's good to see you too. We'll see you later. Oh, yes, indeed. I don't believe it. Why did Topham want us to abandon our work and wait here? Poor Percy has to run the whole branch. It's likely something important. Yeah, yeah, I get that, but still. You also have to consider that he only said about 30 minutes. We can easily catch up with that. Yeah, sure, that'll be no problem at all. Did you recognize those whistles? Absolutely. Hello you two, long time no see. I don't believe it. Hello you three, it has certainly been a long time. Welcome back to the railway. Thank you, we've certainly missed this place. Well, we've missed you. Why are you even here? Just a friendly visit? Not quite, Thomas. You know that new branch Topham is building. Are you going to run that? Yes indeed, with Stanley. On your home ground. Well, former home ground, but I guess you could say it like that. So, how did you end up here? Where did you go after you left the island? It's a long story. We'll be joining you by Navrid Sheds this evening. Titmouth Sheds. There's also a new main shed? Yes, I imagine that you'll be sleeping there with us. Well, Topham just sat by the main shed, so I guess. Anyway, we'll be telling the whole story there, so we don't have to repeat ourselves that much. I see. Well, I can't wait for tonight then. But we're supposed to stay at Farqua tonight. Not anymore, Thomas. Not anymore. Alright. <laughs> well, at least you two haven't changed much. Well, in some things, no. How do you mean? You'll find out tonight. I see. Anyway, we better get going now. Titmuth awaits us. See you later, you two. Later. later.
Wow, cool. Who are they? Do you remember the three box tank engines I told you about? The ones who worked here before you came? Was that them? Yes, indeed. Cool. Man, I remember this being a lot more active when we left. Indeed, bustling with activity. I wonder what happened. Maybe we can ask Topham about it. Maybe, yeah. Holy crud! That's... That's massive! Um, hello Phyllis. I don't think I was told that you were coming by. No, you probably weren't. We're taking this train for Stanley. Did you perhaps steal it? What? No, of course not! This is a scheduled train! A train that was scheduled with Stanley. And I don't see Stanley anywhere. You better know that stealing is not right. No, Duck, stop. These engines are not to make enemies. What do you mean, Gordon? These engines have clearly stolen this train. No, Duck, you don't understand. These engines are welcome. Fine then, can you tell me who they are? Oh, of course. The engines you see in front of you are the original engines of the Soto and Mainland Railway. Does that give them the right to seal the train then? They haven't stolen it. They took it instead of Stanley. Topham told me about it. We were expecting them. Wait, Topham said he hadn't told anybody. Well, with one exception, I guess. I see. See, the updated one says Neil, Clive, and Matthew. Oh, I'm sorry about that, lads. I understand that I wasn't given the full picture. That's alright. It is a great western way, after all, to base your assumptions on what you know. Ah, <gasps> an engine that understands. I've waited for such a long time to hear that. How did you know? Trust me, we would know. We've worked along great western engines. Where, exactly? Are you staying by the big sheds tonight? Well, yeah, obviously. Then you'll hear the whole story there. Very well. See you then. I'm sorry about his behavior. There's no need for that, Gordon. It's typical for a great western engine. I see. Anyway, welcome back, you three. Um, thank you, Gordon. Is something wrong? Well, sorry, but I just didn't expect you to actually stand up for us. Were you expecting the former Gordon? Like, the one that I was when you left? Well, yes. We didn't hear anything about a new Gordon of any kind. Where did things change? Trust me, things happened. You'll pick up on it moving forward. I see. What's going on over here, Gordon? Oh, you three. What are you doing here? Well, we're back for good, James. Topham bought you? Yes. Oh. Wasn't expecting that. What do you mean by that? Well, I didn't mean to be offensive. I would have just thought that Topham would spend the money elsewhere. Ah, uh, thank you for that. Anyway, I imagine that you're going to tell us about your adventures when you first left. That's the plan, yes. Oh god. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever experienced the sheds this packed before. Oh James, you have to complain about everything. This isn't that bad. Whatever. Well, at least we don't have to repeat ourselves anytime soon. It certainly seems like it. So, how do you want to start? Well, first off, are we all going to tell it? No, I think you shall, Clive. You're the best at storytelling. Very well. So be it. <clears throat> so, we left Soda back in 1925, since we're a property of the government, due to us being former war engines. By that point, we'd been on loan to this railway for about 10 years, which was what had been agreed on with Topham. So we left the island after that. Now, due to our age and specs, it was hard to find someone that would actually want to purchase us. After about two months of no one really showing interest, it was decided that we were to be put on trial instead. Following orders given by the government itself, 
We were put on trial on the LNERS shunting engines. We were all three assigned to York, where we would work for about one month during our trial. However, the LNER wasn't really pleased with our performance. So after the trial had concluded, they decided that they didn't want to purchase us. So, the government reissued the same orders, but to the LMS this time with the same intentions. However, we were only there for four days, since they quickly banned us from their system due to the fact that we were, quote, in relation to the Northwestern. I assume that you've heard about the... The court case? Oh yes, absolutely. Well, it made headlines, so it's not really a surprise. I guess not. Anyway, to test our luck for the third time, the same principles were repeated to the Great Western Railway. And amazingly, they actually found a use for us, since one of the mines they served were in need of small shunters to clear their tight curves. So we were eventually purchased by that quarry. And mind you, despite us being called historic objects, in the real industrial world, engines like us don't go for that much, since in a work sense, we can't really provide that much. Anyway, we worked at that mine for about one and a half years until they purchased more capable shunters, given that their economy had gotten more stable. So we were sold to another mine served by the Great Western, who likewise needed small shunters. And we fell in love with working at that mine, not just because we had a lot of work to do, but because of the coal mine's foreman. What was special about him? Well, he is one of the most caring people I've ever met. We were given a lot of attention, and as a result, we felt obligated to give something in return. And we didn't mind, since he was a joy to work for. He was the happiest soul, and there was no doubt about the fact that he loved his work. And he also loved how his engines were very unique in comparison to all the other quarries, who had standard industrial tank engines. To emphasize this, he would frequently organize charity events, where we would pull special public trains to a massive crowd of people. They were very popular, and we loved doing them, since they allowed a change in a normal workday. I can imagine. Honestly, you're making me question why you came back. Seems like it was a train paradise. You could say it like that. It was a lovely place indeed. And we worked there for a remaining time away from Sodor. And another thing about the special events that I didn't mention, was that they generated huge amounts of PR for the mine, which helped the business grow. And even when we entered the Great Depression, while we did have to lay off a large amount of staff, we were never really in any danger of going bankrupt. Well, not until that fateful day. A day where everything changed. W what happened? Well, there's one thing I haven't mentioned about our former owner. What would that be? Well, the underlying problem was that he was old. Very old. Even when he purchased us, he was edging the retirement age. And while he had been an active person throughout his life, he had also been a heavy smoker. And it eventually caught up with him, when he one day collapsed in his office, with breathing issues. He was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. He passed away two days later. That's... that's horrible. I'm so sorry to hear about that. It was a sad day to be sure. Not just because we had lost our whole reason for working at all, but also... <sighs> but also given what came after him. What do you mean? Well, with the quarry being family owned, the foreman title was passed down to his son. And I tell you, he was the polar opposite of his dad. He didn't treat us well, he was always grumpy, and he only really seemed to care about money and saving where necessary. He immediately stopped with the special trains. Even though they were doing wonders for the mine, he thought of them as being too expensive to organize. There was an immediate riot with the locals, who had been active participants in the special events. But he didn't care. And by that point, we stopped caring. And as a form of protest, we intentionally worsened our performance to bring down the efficiency of the quarry. And it worked. There was chaos among the trucks, and the workers quickly got confused and stressed. But all he did about it was to shout orders. It eventually reached a boiling point, resulting in the workers going on strike. Within a week of him starting, the quarry had turned from a thriving business into a collapsing enterprise. It eventually got so bad he had to put us up for sale, just so he could keep the finances in check. However, he had to sell us for cheap, since that was the only way for someone to actually buy us. And wouldn't you know it, just three days after putting us up, there was a letter from a man who wanted to purchase us. And I think you know who it was. I think we do. And now you're here. Now we're here. And I think it's fair to say that you've had quite an adventure during your time away. Very much so. It's been quite the journey. But I'm happy to end that here. The place where we started all those years ago. It's almost poetic. So... How's work going on the branch? Well, we're making excellent progress at the moment, and with the arrival of these three, we can only expect that to continue. That's good news. The Soda and Mainland resumes. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah.